Leaders of Tomorrow Season 10, it's been 10 seasons of empowering India's small businesses such as yourselves in hand-holding and guiding you in your growth journey. I'm Sunanda Jayaseelan on the show tonight. We're bringing you highlights of our panel discussion and experts from our Jaipur Town Hall. On the Town Hall today, we unravel the tourism and hospitality industry in Jaipur. Joining us, Jayan Singh, Managing Partner, Treehouse Hotels, Resorts and Spa. Akshay Gurnani, Managing Director, Gurnani Hotels and Resorts. Shift in strategy, you know, a shift in focus as to how the travel and tourism sector is conquering opportunities that lie ahead. So the way that I would like to answer this is, let me just put forward some challenges that we're going to face. Please, sir. See, after the pandemic or during the pandemic, we all went through a lull, you know. Uh, our cash reserves were absolutely down. Uh, we had to send a lot of people back home because nobody uh, wanted to take the risk of having people on the premise as such. Absolutely. Uh, and, a, and a whole lot of, you know, the depreciation started happening. Uh, the assets that we were managing or we had were showing uh, wear and tear because, you know, one year or six months of not operating a hotel really, really dep depreciates the asset. Immediately after that, you must have heard of this term called revenge tourism happened. Right. Right. Everybody's been talking about a revenge tourism which has happened. And suddenly the occupancy soared. Suddenly we started getting into the, the wedding frenzy because most of the banquets were still not open and people were flocking to smaller hotels or, or uh, city hotels to do the weddings. So once that happened, uh, we still didn't have our manpower back. We still weren't geared for actually uh, serving the guests back. Or the surge in demand. Absolutely. So the surge in demand, we were not ready for that, to be honest. And even now, to be honest with you, uh, people are not joining our industry. 30%, and I was told, 30% of the IHM seats this year went uh, vacant. So we are, uh, the surge in demand has happened. We are all very, very happy with it. Uh, there is a euphoria around revenge tourism. There is a euphoria around all the money that the hoteliers are earning. But right now, I feel we are still not geared to uh, take, actually serve it to that when level. When we look at the domestic tourism footfall, right? Obviously, it is a slightly less premium market than what you would expect, perhaps, from international tourists. They are perhaps more cost sensitive. But the other factor in play here is that international holiday that they would perhaps take in a Switzerland or a Bangkok or a Dubai or a Singapore is now money and time spent within the country. So how did that change domestic spending trends and to what extent did that provide you optimism as this sector began to experience a revival? So first of all, it's a misnomer that if you have foreigners coming, they'll spend more. It's a it's, misnomer. It's, it's a misnomer. Right. So if you have 10 million uh, foreign tourists who are coming to a country, you say that 0.5% of that would be the spending ones. Rest of them, what we are getting in bulk, are the ones who are what we call the backpackers and the budget travelers. There are some mid-segment people who are coming. Uh, most of us uh, who have hotels in Rajasthan would agree with me that we were very happy with the foreign tourists. Yeah. You know, because they are very, very low maintenance. Sure. Very low maintenance. They come, they would not even complain. They would stay the night. Next day morning, early checkout. They'll do your uh, hava mehal. They'll do everything else. They'll come back have a beer, sleep, next day morning, they're out to the next city. Right. So there are no complaints and the cost of running the room is very low when a foreigner is there. It's very low. But here, when you have a domestic traveler, and you'll be surprised today that our ADRs throughout, if you, if you see the comparison of ADRs, they have shot through the roof. Right. So the, who's spending that? Yeah. Is the domestic traveler who's spending it? And when they spend money, and when as Indians, when we spend money, we want value for our money. We might go to a Dubai and say, okay, I'm going to carry my own bag. Or if I'm, I might go to uh, any European country and say, okay, I'm going to pick my bag. But in India, even if I'm staying in Oyo, I need somebody who's, <laughs> who's picking up my bag and going. <laughs> the cost of servicing an uh, Indian client is far higher. And I think when I think of Jaipur, it's such a nice blend of Eastern and Western sensibilities, right? And if you bring up cuisine, immediately, you know, LMB comes to mind, yeah, MI Road Ki Lassi comes to mind, right? Uh, you know, uh, Ravat Kachori comes to mind. And 
Ashish sir a moment ago was talking about startups. So I'm very curious to understand if as an extension to hospitality, whether you see Jaipur emerging as the next food tech, you know, startup hub or ecosystem. Is that something that lies in the cards? Oh, absolutely. Food is something which will never go out of style. I mean, you look at my size and you look at my... <laughs> I mean, uh, food is something that we all uh, we all love, and uh, sweets I think is something which is a major fondness for for Rajasthan and and Jaipur in in particular. So we had so just to give you an instance, there is this samosa party which is a startup uh, which was funded. They just do samosas for parties. That's it. So yeah, delivery you, only, no dining. You can have you can have a mirchi vada party. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what a Jaipur startup could look like, you know. Right. So yes, in terms of I think the kind of uh, cafes that I've seen coming up and mushrooming in Jaipur, they are far better than what we have seen uh, coming up in Delhi. To be honest with you, the the kind of uh, now the culture of going out, mm -hmm. and he's been a pioneer in in actually getting people out. But yes, food tech as well as food. Uh, Innovation can definitely start from here and from the local uh, cuisine which is there, which is available. Because that's what people like to eat. 80% of us still like to eat dal chawal, you know. We did, I mean, it's only 20% times when we go out and, and eat something else. Right. So, uh, absolutely, Jaipur could be the next hub for any kind of uh, food I innovation. I have a follow-up question for you, sir, because I want to take a closer look at how consumer preferences have evolved. All right, I think during the peak of the pandemic, we saw a lot of patrons gravitate towards, you know, uh, properties that were perhaps a bit more secluded, away from the hustle and the bustle of the city, you know, expansive private properties where a patron need not even set foot outside the property, all inclusive packages, for sake of safety, if nothing else. You know, was that sort of just a knee-jerk reaction to the pandemic? Or is that trend now here to stay? Because that, of course, turns the entire travel and tourism ecosystem on its head. Well, if I could answer that, I would be a billionaire, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, all I can say to this is that, uh, so you have to see the entire industry in two segments. So there is this luxury segment, right? Right. Any person who could not go abroad during the pandemic took their private plane and went on to a, a luxurious resort, 30 key, 20 key, uh, run of the, you know, just out of the city kind of a place. And they were willing to pay 30,000 bucks, 40,000 bucks. Even today, if you see the rates in Rishikesh, uh, 30,000 to 50,000 is what they're ranging at in Rishikesh, which about five years back, I mean, we just had some tents which were there. Right. So uh, how the entire travel is evolving is that I think we have one realization which has happened is that domestic travel is here to stay. Mm -hmm. How do we make sure that the domestic traveler who's spending money here does not go out? Right. So you need to create... No, but that's a fact. You need to create properties here. You need to have the, uh, the luxurious properties and especially the heritage properties that we have, like you mentioned. They are a phenomenal attraction for any of the domestic traveler to come. Yeah. Only thing is that they cater to a certain segment, mm -hmm. a segment which is paying a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But in the mid segment, if you have something like that, I think that will be a winner. Well, look, Jayant, I, I believe, you know, we all know that Jaipur is a foodie's delight. You know, um, Jaipur is a shopper's delight. But there are certain segments of tourism that I think are somewhat taking the market by surprise. You know, um, Jaipur is very much home to the Rajasthan Royals, for example, and sports tourism has taken a life of its own. There's also astro-tourism with a lot of, you know, stargazing observatories, stargazing safaris that now occur. Tell us more about these budding markets and how bullish you are on them. Again, it's, it's a very niche market at this moment, and it'll take time to develop. Uh, people try to, tend to follow the, the, the path where they know it's the easiest to make money. Right. But what you are talking about is, is tough. So to, to do uh, astro-tourism, you, you need to have open space, no pollution, which means yeah. that you don't even have sound pollution there. Exactly. So you have to go to Ranthambore or Sabai Madhapur or somewhere which is you know, close to Pali or somewhere to be able to actually see the, the night sky or from if you go 30 kilometers from here, a troll for that matter. You would be able to see a lovely night sky. But the percentage is so low that I don't know how many people would, would really like to invest in it. Mm -hmm. Especially when you talk to businessmen like me and, uh, and actually, of course, the thing is that we look for easy way outs. I mean, we look at a ROI kind of a system. But now with the present uh, startup ecosystem and the youngsters coming into this entire fray, 
I am sure that experiential tourism is going to be the way forward. Yeah. It's just that you need a, a large number of youngsters. Like, to be honest with you, we are coming up with a, and we were just talking, we're coming up with a caravan park. Really? I really want to see, you know, the, the driving mm -hmm. kind of a holiday mm -hmm. through Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. So our first caravan park we are trying to bring up in Nimrana. We are setting up a caravan park. We don't even know whether there are caravans, you know, <laughs> but we, we are investing in it. Yeah. So you need to be a little bit of more uh, forward thinker and think out of the box to be actually be able to capture this market. And it's not an easy market. It's not that it sounds very, very glamorous, you know, yeah. it sounds really glamorous. But is there money backing up yeah. that thing? Or, of course, if if the bankers are willing to 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 back something like this we would be we would be happy to do a deal today and you know by way of closing comments and i and i pose this to you jayanth i believe that you know today's consumer they have growing disposable income right uh, they have in many cases the option to work from home you know staycations are now the new norm they are perhaps increasingly socially conscious the make in india movement has become now a matter of ethics you know, rather than affordability or preference. It's, it's a matter of, you know, uh, loyalty to one's country. How is all of this factored into Jaipur's travel and tourism ecosystem and how do you see it evolving going forward? I think it's it's absolutely critical for us to, uh, to start taking pride in our nation. We all do. And especially travel and tourism, we really need to take it to the next level. Uh, you know, if there are things that we all need to come together and say no to plastic, if that's a government initiative, we need to say no to plastic. If there are things which are uh, which the government is saying a diktat, don't buy from this country, don't go and buy from that country. I think as an industry, we need to come together. And uh, Rajasthan being a center point, like you said, uh, close to five crore domestic uh, travelers coming uh, to Rajasthan, definitely it's a state which has put tourism under the map of the world, right? So uh, this, this has to be the epicenter of anything which is going to start. And a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of uh, budding entrepreneurs, people who are w willing to invest in the hospitality segment are coming and emerging from, from Rajasthan. So there's a bright future. And like you rightly said, we all need to take that pledge. Uh, be Indian, buy Indian, and, and you know, we need to have India first. Phenomenal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for our panelists, please. I mean, they've shared such incredible anecdotes from their personal and professional journeys. I believe it's deeply deserved.